The first step in the HIV-1 life cycle is viral attachment to the CD4T cell surface. The next step is viral entry, which involves a cascade of molecular interactions between the viral envelope glycoprotein and two T-cell surface receptors, a primary receptor and a co-receptor. The GP120 subunit of the envelope protein first binds to CD4, the primary receptor. This induces a conformational change in GP120 that allows it to bind to the co-receptor. Co-receptor binding then triggers conformational changes in the GP41 subunit, leading to insertion of its N-terminal fusion peptide into the host cell's membrane. Fusion results in release of the viral genome into the cytoplasm. The co-receptors are members of the superfamily of G-protein-coupled receptors. Although more than a dozen types of co-receptors have been described, only two co-receptor variants, known as CCR5 and CXCR4, are used by all HIV-1 strains. The concept that co-receptors play a crucial role in HIV disease became evident when a common mutational variant of the CCR5 coding gene, known as Delta-32, was discovered in 1996. This CCR5 genetic variant results in the production of non-functional CCR5 co-receptors. Persons with two normal copies of the CCR5 gene predominate in the population and are susceptible to HIV infection. Persons who inherit two copies of the CCR5 Delta 32 variant from their parents, known as Delta 32 homozygotes, have no functional CCR5 co-receptors and appear to be highly resistant to HIV infection. Delta-32 homozygosity appears not to be associated with any significant deleterious effects. Delta-32 heterozygotes inherit one copy of the CCR5 Delta-32 variant from one parent and a normal form of the CCR5 gene from the other parent. Delta-32 heterozygotes can become infected with HIV, but disease progression is significantly delayed compared to those who have two normal copies of the CCR5 gene. To be effective, a co-receptor antagonist must be directed at a specific co-receptor. A CCR5 co-receptor antagonist, for example, functions by binding specifically to the CCR5 co-receptor molecule. The bound co-receptor is blocked from binding the viral GP120 subunit, which prevents the conformational changes on GP41, which prevents viral particle entry. An HIV particle that is unable to enter the T-cell cannot infect it and cannot replicate. Different HIV strains vary in their ability to use the major co-receptors to achieve entry into the host cell. Some HIV strains use only the CCR5 co-receptor, some only the CXCR4 co-receptor, while other viruses, known as dual tropic, use both. An HIV-infected individual may have only the CCR5 using virus, only the CXCR4 using virus, or a mixture of CCR5 using, CXCR4 using, and dual tropic viruses. In the early phase of infection, the CCR5 using virus predominates in most patients. In the late phase of infection, HIV strains capable of using CXCR4 often emerge. Unlike reverse transcriptase and protease inhibitors which work inside the infected cell, co-receptor antagonists function on the outside of the host cell. Co-receptor antagonists are therefore classified as entry inhibitors. The mechanism of action of co-receptor antagonists differs from other antiretrovirals in a very important way. Rather than binding to viral proteins, this new class prevents viral replication by binding to human host cells, such as T-cells and macrophages. This unique mechanism has potential clinical advantages. Pfizer is committed to the development of safe and effective formulations for the treatment of HIV disease.